Hello everyone, my name is Parag Pal and welcome back in my new video. In this video, I am going to discuss about the design of circular footing. But my request to you all is, please watch this video at the end because you can never understand if you watch in the middle of the video. Okay, so before that, please visit my website www.civilnotes.com, my Facebook page also. Okay, there you can find this video also. Okay, and uh, if you want these notes, then please wait, I am going to upload in a one Android app. So, the given data for this design of circular footing are the total column load. Okay, for a design of circular footing, there is a circular column. Okay, so the total column load, what we are exactly getting is 2400 kilonewton. Okay, then if you are designing the circular footing or any sort of footing, so if it is square footing, so you are taking the approximate weight of the footing will be a 5% of the weight column load. Okay, but here we are designing the circular footing so that we are considering the approximate weight of the footing be 10% of the column load. So the weight, uh, so whatever the loading uh, weight of the footing is to be 240 kilonewton. Okay, so the total load will be the total column load plus approximate weight of footing of 10% of the column load, which is 240. We are adding these two value, we are getting 2640 kilonewton. So this is what your total load for a footing. After that, the self bearing capacity to the soil is already given, or it can be. Uh, you can also determine the step bearing capacity. SBC of the soil is like a, almost in every numerical it is given. Okay, so in this in this numerical it is 250 kilonewton per meter square. Okay, so after that, the first thing is you have a given data, so you need to determine the area of the particular footing. So what will be the area of the footing? The formula for determination of the area of footing will be a total load upon step bearing capacity so total load is 2640 upon 250 step bearing capacity so you are getting 10.56 meter square okay so you getting length and width but you not yet get the depth so we are further proceed for the determination of the depth so here it is a given data from the given data itself i determine the area of the footing okay and i calculate what will be the approximate work for a footing if it is square footing, I am taking as a 5% of the column load. If it is a circular footing, I am taking as a 10% of the column load. Now the important thing is that here the column load what I have, it is already factored load. If in your numerical, if it is tell that like it is a working load, it is a service load, then you first need to make it as a factor by multiplying 1.5 to the given load. Then and only then you can take as an approximate weight for a, that factored load. It is already factored, so I am not taking as a any loading 1.5 multiplication factor. Okay, so this is what you need to do in your given data itself. After that, we are going to further proceed for our step by step calculation. So now let's start with our step. Step one, what I did. So here, let the diameter of the footing be x meter. So I just consider the diameter of the footing is x meter because it is our circular footing, right? So I am considering x meter as a diameter. So if you want to determine the diameter, what I did, we have the area of footing, right? This is what our area of footing. So I compare this area of footing with equals to the, what exactly the formula for the diameter of the circle? It is pi by 4 into d square. Okay, so area of footing equals to pi by 4 into x square. Here, I represent x as a diameter. Okay, so x will be the x diameter square. Okay, so x is a diameter. So I get the diameter as a 3.667 meter. Right, so I am going to provide a diameter of 3.667 meter for a circular footing. Okay, now this is what my step number one. So what I got, I got the area of the footing. Now I got the diameter of the footing. After that, I need to determine what will be the net upward pressure intensity. The net upward pressure intensity is calculated by using what is a column load divided by the pi by 4 into the diameter of the footing okay so this is what the column load it is not a total load okay only column load if you want to determine the net upward pressure intensity you need to use the column load divided by the area of the main area of the um, circular footing okay so this is what 2400 into 10 raised to power 3 i convert into the newton pi by 4 into 3.75 square okay so i what i got i got the net upward pressure intensity as a 
217300 newton per meter square okay so the determination of the depth of the footing is my step number 3 in step number 3 my first calculation is the punching shear concentration if you want to determine the punching shear concentration like me like mean punching load so what you need to do is the whatever the net pressure upward pressure intensity you determine okay 217300 into pi by 4 into the diameter of the footing minus diameter of the column here 0 0.60 is a diameter of the column which is given i not even read over here but it is given in the numerical so I got the punching load as a 2338565 Newton. Okay, which is what my punching shear considered punching load. Now, after getting the punching load, I designed the punching shear strength for this punching load, which is considered as a 1.80 Newton per mm square. Okay, now after that, I'm equating the punching shear resistance to the factored punching load. Okay, so it is a pi into 600 into d what i need to determine into the punching shear strength is equals to 1.5 in this factor okay punching load so from that i got the value as a depth of the footing is a 1035 mm what i did look i first calculate the punching load then after that design punching shear strength is 1.80 newton per mm square is given after that i compare this both the value like i equate the punching shear resistance to the factored punching load okay so this is what the punching load i make it as a factor okay and it is what this is this thing is the shear resist punching shear resistance which is given by pi into diameter of the column okay this is the depth of the footing into 1.8 which is the design shear strength so i got the d as a 1034 mm it means the depth of the circular footing what i got is 1034 mm now after that my second step in the same design of depth of the footing is now I need to check where the bending moment consideration, okay, whether the bending moment is proper or not. For that, the above figure, this figure is represent the plan of the footing. This small circle represent the column, okay, that is having the diameter of what 0.6, okay, so radius is definitely 0.300 mm, okay, and this is R is a depth of the overall uh, radius of the what footing. Okay, which is a depth of the total diameter of the footing we have is 3.75, right? So this is what 3.75 by 2. So we can get the radius. Okay, so after that we are considering the shaded area. This shaded area. So first we need to determine the shaded area. Okay, so for the shaded area the formula is pi by 4 divided by 1.875 that is uh, minus 0 0.30. Okay, so we are make it this. 3.75 as a half square minus r that means 600 mm as a half so we can get the area of the shaded area which is very simple pi by 4 into this is what the half of this value half of diameter minus or you can say radius radius pi by 4 into capital r square minus small r square we are getting the radius of shared shaded area as a 2.69 meter square so the distance of the centroid of the shaded area we need to calculate so that is the distance of the shaded centroid of the shaded area given by 0 0.6 into capital r square plus small r square plus capital r into small r divided by capital r plus small r place all the value you can get the distance 1.916 meter okay which is the distance of the centroid of the shaded area okay after that the upward force on a shaded area, what will be the upward pressure force on a shaded area that also need to calculate. Okay, so that is given by the net upward pressure, okay, the punching load, uh, the net upward pressure, okay, upward pressure intensity, okay, multiplied by 2.69. Okay, so that will be given as the upward pressure shaded area. Okay, after that you need to determine what will be the maximum bending moment okay factored moment and breadth of the shaded part of the column face so maximum bending moment is given by the upward force on a shaded area multiplied by 1.916 that means this value minus of the diameter radius of the diameter of the column okay circular column so you can get the maximum bending moment area okay so maximum bending moment calculation is very easy what will be your upward force on a shaded area you need to multiply it with the the distance of the center of the shaded area minus of the radius of the circular column okay so you will get the maximum bending moment in kilo in newton meter okay after that we will make it as a factored moment so for that we need to multiply 
maximum bending moment with the 1.5. So you can get the factored moment. As you get the factored moment, you can determine the breadth of the shaded part of the column face, which is given as a B. So B is nothing but equals to pi into diameter of the column divided by 4. So you can get the 471.2. Okay. Then after that, we are equating the limiting moment with the moment. Okay. Like a limit MU limiting with the MU. So you can like if we are using your FE4 and 5. So for that MU limiting is given as 0.138 epsi into B into D square equals to MU we are having as a um, okay MU we are having as this uh, factor M is 1416918 okay so we are putting all this value so when we are equating okay so I am not right over here I think I forgot so this value 0 0.138 20 into 471 into this square equals to 1, uh, 1416918 you need to compare okay then you can get the value d i just calculate in my calculator so i forgot to write over there okay so the value can when you compare 0.138 epsik bd square equals to 1416918 you can get the value as a d equals to 1044 mm okay so now we can get a d as a 1044 okay so here what we determine the diameter is 1034 Okay, so that is capital diameter is a we need to determine 1034 and the small diameter is 1044 after equating the moment. Okay, so from that if it, we are providing the 16 mm diameter of the bar of the clear cover of 60 mm. So the effective cover of the center to upper layer of the bar is nothing but what we are providing we are providing 60 mm. Okay, 60 is a clear cover plus 60 is a diameter of the bar. Okay plus 60 by 2 is a 8. Okay, so it is getting 84. So the overall depth of the footing is 100 floor plus 84. So it is getting as a 1128 mm. So we getting the overall depth of the footing as a 1128 mm. So the overall depth may be increased by 30% okay, to 40% to limit the shear, shear stresses. If you wanted to limit the shear stresses, the overall depth may be increased by 30% to 40%. Thus, we are providing the overall depth as a 1570. Okay, so you can see over here. Okay, so 1034 and here we are getting as a 1128. So we are just increasing somehow 30% to 40%. So we are consider it as a 1570. Okay, I am taking as a 30%, 40% and adding of the 30% of this value in itself. So, we are getting value as a 1570. Okay, so after that, we are going to determine what will be the actual effective depth. Okay, so actual effective depth will be 1570 minus of this 84, which is a clear cover or effective. Okay, so we are getting the 141486. So, the bending moment, that is a factored bending moment, divided by b into d square we are getting as a 1.362 so the percentage of still required is 50 in bracket 1 minus under root of 1 minus mu upon fck okay into this value mu into bd square upon fy upon fck you are getting the value as a 0.413 percentile okay so that is what some interesting calculation actually but it is somewhat complicated okay so the ast will be 0.143 by 100 into B into D. Okay, so it will be 2869 mm square. So with respect to this area, we are going to provide the 15 mm bars of the 16 mm diameter. Okay, so from that, the AST equals to pi by 4 into 60 square into 15, you can get the area of the 3015 mm square. Thus, the reinforcement to the above extent should be provided in the each of the two principal directions that is a half in this direction, half in this direction in a width equal to the side of the square inscribed in the circle of radius of 1875 mm. Okay, that is will be radius of the footing. So, the length of the side of the inscribed circle is, so what will be the inscribed circle radius is can be calculated by length of the inscribed circle calculated by radius under root of 2 radius of the bigger circle under root of 2 so you can get the 2652 mm okay so i have considered the 2650 mm okay so now i am going to describe you the diagrammatical representation of the particular diagram so you can see over here the diagrammatical representation this is what the column which is having the 600 mm diameter okay so we are going to design this in next video but here we design this value okay 
so you can see over here this is what the overall diameter is 3750 okay we are provided 15 mm numbers 15 numbers of the 16 mm diameter of the this way okay this is what we are going to design in our next video okay this is not a part of the footing okay in this video this is what the column design of column so we design this value so here we provided the 15 numbers of 16 mm diameter horizontally okay and vertically over here like in this diagram okay so longitudinally and transverse we provided in footing i am talking about in footing in terms of footing itself so 15 in this direction and 15 in this direction so you can design the footing okay so again i am going to tell you some basic of this what we exactly did okay that calculation is very easy we determined the area of footing in given data itself by using the total load by sbc we determined the diameter of the footing we determined the nip of upward intensity then we determined the depth of the footing as we get the depth of the footing we just went to the determination of the maximum bending moment and factored moment by using this maximum maximum bending moment and factored moment we design the d what is d required so whatever the next d what we are getting that need to be bigger than this value because this is what d required okay now after all overall depth is what what we get 1128 so this value is definitely more than <clears throat> 1034 this is this is d required okay so this value is greater than uh, 1128 is greater than that value so that means we are safe in the bending okay so that is that that exactly what we did then after that we determine the percentage of steel required and with respect to that that particular steel ast we determine the area of the steel and then we determine number of bar so that is very easy for us okay so thank you for watching my tutorial please give thumbs for my videos and like my video Have a nice day. Bye-bye.